So in the previous video I left off where I just didn't feel ready to have fibro uh, my fibroids removed, a myomectomy, because I was also worried about my recovery, like being alone and all that. And also I felt like I just had a lot going on in my life and these things just don't bother me physically. So I just, you know, I just lived through it. And then I knew one of the obstacles of having fibroids is being able to conceive or carrying um, a healthy pregnancy to full term. And at that time in my life, honestly, I just wasn't ready to have a baby because I used to feel like, you know, I'm struggling to pay my rent, um, struggling to feed myself. Like it's not easy. Um, I was working, yes, I was getting paid. At some point I started working for government agencies and I was getting paid well. So it's not like struggling in that sense, but I felt like taking care of myself is already um, a challenge or it's a task. So I used to be like getting a baby, like, and I'm, I was raised by a single mother. So in my head, I'm always thinking if I got a baby, I need to be able to take care of that child, even if the father is there, because what if for one reason or the other, they're not there, like how would I take care of them? And so I thought, even though I know, you know, I'm getting older and I have fibroids and getting a baby would be a challenge, I just never felt ready for some reason when I was there. Because then again, raising a child there, especially if you end up being a single parent, then it's going to be more challenging as well. Because getting babysitters or paying for uh, childcare is expensive. So I never rushed to get them removed so that I could get a baby because I also never felt ready to get a baby at that time. And throughout my life, actually, um, I always have felt like I have to explain myself to people because people would look at you and go like, oh, you're pregnant. I'm like, girl, like, I'm not pregnant. I have fibroids. That's why my stomach is big. Because now my stomach started growing bigger and bigger. And I'm thinking part of that is diet. Because if you would see my pictures, like me growing up in Kenya, you know, from nursery school, primary and high school, I've always been a thin kind of girl. Um, not the super thin, but not chubby at all. I've always been like a Kamkonde girl. And so, and my stomach never showed, you know, then. But once I got to the US, I think also diet, cause you know, the meat there tastes so different from meat here. Uh, milk, eggs, you name it, almost even bananas, like everything you eat over there, it just tastes different. And maybe some of that could be attributed to genetically modified uh, foods. And so, also my work schedule and my school schedule were tight sometimes i'd have to work uh, overnight and then in the morning i'd have to go to school and then sleep during the day and then go to work again and then the following day I go to school so my schedule was tight so at some point i would eat a lot of junk food especially the first few years when i was in the u.s i would eat a lot of junk food uh, i used to like wendy's a lot because they had these uh, shredded meat burgers. So I used to eat that, you know, obviously with some juice and um, that's not healthy food. And so in my work schedule and my school schedule at some point um, forced me to get the most convenient food, which was junk food. So I'm thinking that also contributed to my weight gain and my stomach gain. So for, for, for a while, I thought it's just me getting fat when my stomach was big. Um, until I later learned that fibroids grow and your stomach grows as if you're pregnant. So when people would see me, they would, you know, comment that I'm pregnant and it would honestly not annoy me a lot, but it would just in any boat to like, you know, wait for me to tell you I'm pregnant. So, you know, when I'm pregnant, I'm not pregnant. And then once it would be more annoying when you trying to like convince someone, imagine I'm not pregnant when they're insisting, no, you are like, you look pregnant. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And then, you know, you'd have to explain, hey, I have fibroids and stuff like that. I remember one time I came to Kenya from the US and I went to visit my aunt and she had a friend of hers. And later on, my aunt told me, so-and-so was telling me that you're pregnant. And I'm like, no, I'm not pregnant. I just have fibroids. 
So people would speculate that you're pregnant and you're expecting. And so, you know, it's challenging when you have fibroids. Um, something else is that one time I had a roommate and we had just moved in together. We were friends before we moved in together. And all this time we were friends. She never mentioned anything about my stomach. But this time when we moved in together, and remember we have different work schedules. So when I'm home eating or sleeping, she's not there. And then one time we were together, I think it was a weekend. And she said to me, you know, you need to stop eating a lot. Look at your stomach, it's so big. And that was one of the most hurtful, annoying comments I've ever had. Because I was like, why are you assuming that my stomach is big because of eating, you know? We haven't even lived together for so long. You don't even know my eating patterns. And at that time, mind you, I already have a blender in the house. She didn't even have a blender. I brought my blender because I love uh, making smoothies a lot, fruit and vegetable smoothies. So I was like, she can't even see. Here I am struggling to like eat healthy. I would do like sometimes spinach, bananas, mangoes, you know, whatever kind of fruit that I can get. Um, I would do it and I don't add sugar to my smoothies. So I was offended with that. And then I observed her. Now that she mentioned about eating habits, I started observing her. And she was this, I'm short by the way, but she was shorter than me and she was more petite. Any hour to do a fupi or conde. So I would watch her eat and I was I told her like, see the amount of food you're eating. Imagine me, I can't eat that amount of food, you know? like it's a lot like she would eat a lot <laughs> and she's so small nae hanoni but because we menona no tumbo it's all about eating but anyway that was that so those those are some of the comments that i've gotten uh you know in my life uh dealing with fibroids people tell you eat too much people tell you you're pregnant i even have another friend of mine who knows me from high school and just recently last year i posted a photo you know on my stories and she saw it and she's like oh congratulations you're pregnant i'm like i'm not pregnant like i think it gets annoying at some point because it's like people are, it's, it's like they want you to get pregnant they want you to have a child because they're like you know and so they just assume you're pregnant and so it's always having to explain no i'm not pregnant and um, you know i have fibroids so i've never actually been ashamed of talking about my fibroids or telling someone i have fibroids because i feel like it's not something that i brought to myself or you know it's it's just natural and these things i think they're also genetic uh, however my grandmother does not have she's never experienced fibroids she has nine kids uh, my mom who has one child has never had issues with fibroids however her first cousin from her mother's side has had fibroids and her two sisters have had fibroids so i think these things are genetics and also i hear that one of my first cousins have has also dealt with fibroids and i hear another second cousin one of mine has also dealt with fibroids so I think these things just run in the family and I feel like the earlier you can detect them the better so that you can start dealing with them because me I found out later in life in my 20s past high school and then I just never dealt with it and then these things grow because my understanding is that they feed in your blood you know so I guess the more blood you have or the more healthy blood like they, they grow you know and also something else that i learned about okay yes the growth obviously is one of them um the other thing is that once you remove them because of i know people who've removed the fibroids they grow back quickly so that's the other challenge it's like just knowing how to deal with them and so you know um i moved back here to Kenya and my mom mentioned to me also my grandmother oh my grandmother was so worried about <laughs> how big my stomach is over the years and there's no baby and she wants to see my baby but do you mean gonna tumbo kubwa oh my god and then you know she's you know old school so she would start saying you know someone bewitched you or something 
I don't want to love so hard. <laughs> you know, like for her to understand these things are genetic. Like she doesn't understand. Mimi Sina, your mom doesn't have them, but you have them. How? <laughs> Someone must have done something to you. So there's also that challenge that I've had now. Over the years, I've started thinking, okay, maybe I need, it's time for me to become a parent. And so when I moved back here in Kenya, uh, my mom sent me this clip about this lady on YouTube that um, has like a herbal clinic that treats fibroids. And so I started taking those medication, hoping that they would shrink the fibroid and that I wouldn't have to like, you know, go to the hospital for surgery because hospitals mostly that's the option that they give you. Hey, you need to have surgery, you need to get them removed. But, you know, I also believe in alternative medicine. And so I thought, well, let me get this, be drinking this herbal medication to see if they'll shrink anything. And honestly, they never shrank anything. And I think it's because they were so grown. I had seen a, pre a different doctor here in Kenya who also runs kind of like alternative medicine. But when he kind of touched my stomach, he told me he felt like the fibroids were calcified or rather they become like stones so it's not uh, easy for herbal medicine to remove it i should you know just get surgery so i tried this medication nothing happened for like three months because she was saying that um, she also had big fibroids and she the way she started doing this alternative medicine thing is because she started trying to figure out how to manage her fibroids without having to get surgery and so she drank this uh, herbal medication and she says she had a big fibroid and it kind of disappeared or shrunk and she was able to get pregnant so i was hoping the same would happen to me but it didn't and so my mom was like you know what um go back again and see if you you know she can give you um maybe higher dosage or different dosage to help you know shrink the fibroids so i went back again and she increased the dosage she basically she kind of added the same amount of medication that i had and it still didn't really do anything so i started realizing that i honestly i have to get surgery like whether i like it or not and also time is ticking you know i'm almost 40 my grandma is almost 90 i would love for her to at least meet one of my children so i started thinking um someone actually told me that if my fibroids were smaller and i was doing the herbal medication maybe then the fibroids would have shrunk but mine were overgrown remember mine are over 10 years like a doctor has told me they've calcified so it's like almost you know no way back for me in terms of herbal medication so i try, I've tried herbal medication but it just didn't work for me but funny enough um during the time when I was trying herbal medication this year, I actually got pregnant for the first time in my life. Uh, over the years, uh, whenever I was dating and I was sexually active, I just knew like I would never get pregnant because I, I don't use contraception. And uh, the other thing that people assume about people who have uh, fibroids but they don't know it's you, you have fibroids they assume you know you're not getting pregnant because maybe you're using contraceptives i've had people tell me that um oh you know you know don't lie to us you guys it's medicine you know contraceptives that you take to prevent yourself from getting pregnant me i, I don't use contraceptives but i still never got pregnant over the years so i've always known ah, me, me, i'm not getting pregnant because of these fibroids but funny enough this year i did get pregnant for the first time in my life and i don't know if it's partly because of the herbal medication that i was using maybe it improved my fertility but just didn't uh, shrink or get rid of my fibroids i don't know so anyway uh, fast forward i moved back to kenya and i decided you know what um i think i'm ready to get this surgery done and so I completed building my house last year and I was like, this year, which is now last year, I am also gonna get surgery and get rid of this thing and hopefully be able to get pregnant soon after before they grow, because these things grow. Um, I, I know people who've had uh, multiple surgeries to remove fibroids, 
because I hear they grow like hair, you know. And especially if you don't eat healthy stuff, like if you're into sugars, I'm into pastries like cakes and stuff, but I'm not into sugary ice cream, sugary whatever. I feel like I balance my diet pretty well, or sodas all the time, you know, or juices. So I think also diet uh, increases them their growth, and especially even after you've had them removed. And so the other risk of obviously having surgery that you know, I was hoping the herbal medication would prevent me from getting surgery is, you know, some people have had them removed and then they don't get pregnant at all. So you don't know if, you know, did the doctor mess up with you when they were in there doing surgery? So that's the other risk. You go get them removed and then you hoping that you'll get pregnant and then you never get pregnant. So I was hoping that the herbal medication would work, but it didn't. So here we are.